Warning. This episode contains potentially intense emotions and scenes, including a scene of near-fatal suffocation. Time codes are included in the description. Listener discretion is advised. Previously on Super Idols RPG, Lucia broke into her father's computer to steal blueprints for Crimson Signal Headquarters, and the group used them to start on rescue plans for Anne. Karen also helped by bringing in a new friend, Cassandra Tora, a tech genius who does behind-the-scenes work for Sagittaria. Cass proved herself trustworthy in short order, partly by introducing the group to her adorable AI assistant, Polly.ux. Together, the group executed phase one of their heist, casing the joint. Bane Raven and Queen Bee scouted the outside of the building for entrances and exits, while the rest of the group took a tour in disguise. Despite a few small hiccups, phase one went mostly well. I'm sure this means the gang is now incredibly prepared and nothing can possibly go wrong on today's episode of Super Idols RPG. Hey there, everyone, and welcome back to Super Idols RPG. As always, I'm your GM, Aaron Cerise, and with me today are Dana. Hello. T. Hello. Drac. Hey. Luca. Hi. And Liv. Hello. And welcome back to our special guest player, Alice Kira. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Yay. Thank you so much for coming back Yay. for the second part of the big heist. I really appreciate yeah. it. Thanks for having me back. I'm glad I don't have to abandon you all after the planning stage. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, I, I, it's, I guess it was poor planning on my part to underestimate how much time this would actually take up, but I think it's good that y'all prepared as much as you did because it's a mm -hmm. big building with lots of stuff in it. I'll say that. Yeah. i also glad that we spent a lot of that time just interacting and, you know, getting yes. those, yeah. those character discussions. Yeah. Getting to know... Good, good bean, Cass. <laughs> yes. Which uh, I meant to say, by the way, in uh, their intro last time, but I couldn't find a good opening for it because I didn't want, like, Karen to step on Cass's boundaries in some way. But I do want to say this uh, on the show at some point. Karen is asexual and also uh, met Cass on an online community and they bonded by talking about the fact that they are both ace. Aww. Yeah. It's Aww. really cool. Aww. <laughs> Aww. Yeah, so I, again, I couldn't find a great, like, in-story place to say that, but I did want that to be known. Yeah. So you're you're saying that Cass is something of a computer ace? <laughs> hey! Finger gunning at the microphone. <laughs> Someone had to say it. Thank you very much for doing so. <laughs> okay, so, hopefully everybody remembers everything from last time, uh, but before we move on fully, there are a couple of little cleanup things I need to touch on before we start. Uh, so first, we did end of session at the end of last one. You can hear that on our Patreon if you're one of our, uh, if you're one of our, just the regular uh, $1 per month our Super Idol support gets you uh, behind the scenes stuff like our before and after session talks if you're interested in those. But anyway, so we, we did our end of session at the end of last episode and starting start of session now, I'm going to give you all one team point, so you have one team point. Use it wisely. Oh, thank, God. <laughs> thank goodness. Uh, and also, we have uh, two characters who got some advancement type things. Uh, first, we have Jaden, who got like just a straight up advancement. Uh, what did you end up picking for that, Drac? Um, I ended up picking the last um, three flares of the Nova. Oh yes. Um, so I now have I now have move, shielding, and elemental awareness. Oh my goodness. <laughs> And I feel like move is going to be very, very useful because of what we're doing today. <laughs> Jaden is just going to be like the full-on avatar at some point. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very, very much looking forward to that. Oh, and also we had uh, Valerie who picked up uh, an exciting new Doom sign. Yay! Yay! Yay. Uh, yes, <laughs> I'm picking up the Doom sign. Infinite powers. Mark your Doom track to use an ability from any playbook one time. Uh, and to be to be clear, that's not like a, a mechanical move. 
uh, like other playbooks have, but, um, you know, a superpower that I can use with my other moves, like uh, elemental control or flight or something like that. Uh, oh which... my goodness. Vi- Violence Violet and Elementum in combination are going to be like <laughs> such a powerhouse. That's terrifying to think of, but uh, yes, yeah, so I think that makes sense with how Vivi has been pushing her powers to their their boundaries in new and exciting ways lately. Awesome. Uh, may just discover new powers. We shall see what we shall see. And uh, using those new powers may also further the Doom track because, you know, consistent branding is very important. <laughs> <laughs> right. Do you do you hit a do you mark a Doom track whenever you use that? Yes, all of the Doom Sign abilities require marking a Doom track to use. It's uh, very yikes. slippery slope. Mm. Oh boy, it's going to be interesting. I'm going to have a fun time determining what that means in relation <laughs> to what we said your Doom is. <laughs> mm-hmm. I think I have some ideas, but anyway, <laughs> that's not important right now. Right, what's important right now is crimes. Yes. Yes. We need to engage in the the love language of crimes, which I think we might... I can't remember if we said that on the mic last time, but... Everybody is engaging in the love language of crimes tonight and forging the bonds of friendship that will last forever. You'll love to see it. Uh, Speaking of these crimes, uh, who wants to give a a brief synopsis of what y'all's... The start of y'all's plan anyway is... Well, under the cover of darkness, we are going to break up, break down, in not break down, break in. That was the one. <laughs> not up or down, but we're going to break in. First step, cry. We're all just going to sit outside the front door, dressed in and black, just, and cry. <laughs> cry. <laughs> Listen, if we break up, I think I would break down, so. Aww. Yeah. Aww. <laughs> I can't even, like, finger guns at you. Aww, <laughs> Yeah, we're going to break into the cr- big fancy Crimson Signal building and then do various acts of espionage slash sabotage. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you have a, a preferred entrance that you that you found that Angie helped you find, and you also identified on your tour towards the end of last session a few areas that you're interested in hitting once you are inside, including, uh, well, we'll probably go into that once we get into character, so... <laughs> Just know that we have an area of the building that y'all will probably be setting up around. So what do you what do you all do to last minute prepare before you head out to the area? Okay, yeah, so I'm going to be marking a heavy load, I think. I just really want a lot of gear for this one. Oh, sure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever that means in Basque's terms. <laughs> oh, no, it's a, a Blades in the Dark reference. I, I wondered. <laughs> Uh, is this okay. a game that I don't know about? I need to play that. I really need to yeah, play that. Yeah, me too. I think Cass has uh, replaced her normal outfit of shirt and overalls with shirt, overalls, and then a black hoodie on top uh, for Ooh. stealth. And then <laughs> also has like a small backpack and one of those like cool sampling board things on like a shoulder strap. Ooh, like a small, like, mixing board? Yeah, like a six by six with the little buttons. Nice. Oh, okay. I just think they're cool. They remind me of a yeah. math toy I had as a kid. Nice. Sweet. Uh, and I know that um, <laughs> Jaden has a selection of items that he's brought with him, but he's ar- Drac has already provided me with a list of what Jaden's bringing <laughs> along, so I think we'll let that come out in mm-hmm. play. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> if it even does, I just I just picked a bunch of things that I found funny that Jaden would probably have, yeah, and m- might be useful in the right circumstance, but we don't know. But yeah, um, I think Jaden is probably going to tell um his aunt like he's staying over at a friend's house, like probably, and like he feels real guilty about lying, um, <laughs> and just rushes out the door before um his aunt can ask any questions. <laughs> All right, uh, I think I might actually have everybody literally actually go to Karen's just so that parents like have like visual confirmation that this is where their children are if they want that Mm -hmm. yeah no that makes sense actually yeah (laughs) yeah so like people can get dropped off at Karen's place and Karen will uh reassure them that their children will be well taken care of with the (laughs) parental figures that are definitely present in her home (laughs) 
Okay. Uh, and anybody else have any last minute things they're bringing with them or costumes that they're wearing or anything like that? Yes. Uh, Angie is wearing a cat suit. Yes. Not with the ears, <laughs> but like the, yeah, okay. you know, like <laughs> the, the classic femme fatale. Like the 60s spy type. Yeah. Just going full on, just going full, full on. on. <laughs> yeah. Like there's nice. a corset for some reason and, you know, you don't know why, but it's there. And, uh, but instead of like high heels or whatever, she's just wearing sneakers. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> is this something that you're magicking up from your Bane Raven persona or is it like a literal thing that you have um I think uh since she's established that she can just make whatever cool clothes she wants with the transformation feature she's just been experimenting with that a lot so she just did that awesome and we'll do all your transformation shifts and whatnot once we get through everybody here uh speaking of transformations I do think Lucia is transformed into Trixie specifically so she has access to her powers but um kind of like when they went on the tour the most mundane look like all her hair is like tucked back into a ponytail that's tucked into her hoodie that she has over her head black hoodie black pants black shoes she wants to be as incognito as possible very smart (laughs) probably even one of those like face masks even just Ooh. like oh my god <laughs> as not not like a weird one like the ones we are all currently wearing in 2021 mm-hmm. um oh, okay cuz she has the glitter so to cover her face she yeah. is unclockable yeah just like a like a black cloth face mask over just just the bottom part of the face yes okay well, that's all very very smart of all of you <laughs> Yeah, and I've been thinking about it, and Vivi has also altered her costume when she when she transforms to show up. She has sort of the same black color as her, you know, usual dress, but black gloves instead of white gloves, and it has sort of loose pants instead of the dress, but still has a purple ribbon around her waist, uh, like a belt, and her hair is tied back with the purple ribbon and there's a purple mask over her face. It's like a, a tactical outfit with the, um, you know, her face covered up with this sort of larger ribbon. Yeah. Okay. And I think, did you go over your, your outfit for this last time, Luca? Uh, not this time. Well, one thing that Alan does before leaving is to write uh, a letter to their parents that's well hidden just in case they don't come home, saying, I did not run away. Please investigate Crimson Signal. Oh, that's that's really mm-hmm. that's sad, but it is also really smart. They're a lot more worried than they let on. Mm. Yeah, because they've um, done the most research on this so far, so that I think they, they understand the gravity of the potential for this situation. They bike to Karen's house, and then they just find some bushes to transform. And out comes Hornet. Oh. Which is, uh, went all out with the villain thing. So it's a very Du Bois kind of costume with the visible seams and the padding, dark gray and bronze, with uh, a domino mask, and the hair is slicked back with gel. Oh my goodness. <laughs> if anybody does want uh, fodder for your Queen Bee villain alt, uh, have at it, fan artists. <laughs> Okay, and I think I didn't go over. We went over Jaden's stuff. Did uh, Jaden have a specific outfit, or uh, is he just going with like the dark hoodie and jeans and whatnot as well? I think he's wearing like um, black jeans, black hoodie, just same thing like that. I think the only difference is the hoodie is another zero degrees hoodie that he has. Mm-hmm. He's like he was like, okay, I've been seen in this one, and he's change it out for when we break in. So right. um, he has just a slightly different one, but yeah, he's not transforming right now. Okay, yeah, that's what I was gonna gonna ask next. Was I think we have yeah. uh, we have Queen Bee, Bane Raven, Trixie, and Violence Violet who've all pre transformed. So Cass and Jaden are coming as themselves to start with, but we'll we'll get to them later. Mm-hmm. So in that case, uh, anybody who is transforming, uh, you can do your transformation label shift and just quickly let us know what that is. I'm gonna shift mundane down and danger up. I'm going to shift danger up and superior down. I'm also going to shift danger up and mundane down. 
I'm going to shift Freak down and Danger up. Nice. Okay, so you've all gathered at Karen's place. Uh, your if if your respective parental figures have dropped you off, they've they've seen you off. They're they've waved goodbye, and you're all just together at uh in Karen's basement at this point. Anybody who hasn't seen Karen's place before, uh, I guess how do you react to this uh nice warm uh media nerds basement type suite? <laughs> Wow, looks really good. Oh, right, because Queen Bee hasn't been here before. Yeah. <laughs> wow, you have, like, your own whole studio in here. Yeah, I've, I've been a part of the Idol Club for a few years, I, and I had an extra room, so I felt like, well, you you use what you've got. I love it. Thank you. And she gives you a, a winning smile. Yeah, all the equipment here is really, like, really high tech it's, it's pretty cool we used yeah. it for when we were working on the song together mm-hmm. yeah that was that was really nice hmm. i'll make sure i send you the uh, the next version of the of the song sometime soon by the way sometime when we're not pulling a gigantic heist oh yeah oh, yeah yeah, right. yeah that's true. speaking of heist um karen your room is awesome by the way it's really really cool and trixie turns to um Hornet and Bane Raven and just looks them up and down. <laughs> <laughs> right, because we got like half the people here in like just like j- jeans and hoodies and practical like mm-hmm. stealth clothing and the other half in like movie style heist clothing. Yep. <laughs> yep. With- yep. <laughs> I'm sorry, what's not stealthy about bright purple ribbons? I wanted to be prepared. So you decided to dress up like Sandy from the end of Greece. Uh, yeah, obviously. <sighs> We're supposed to be stealthy. We're supposed to be sneaking into places. You make a, like, you can't even be a honeypot. You're 16. What's a honeypot? Don't worry about it. We'll tell you when you're older. Yeah, don't worry about that, Jade. And K- Karen puts her hands over Jaden's ears. <laughs> <laughs> well, wait, why, cover my, why cover my ears? What's a honeypot? <laughs> <sighs> I don't really think that's that effective of a strategy anyways it's not it's the worst move it's the worst play every single time it's flexible material that i can slide around in i'm intending to break into something not to attract attention of the guards look my hair is in a bun that is fairly practical i will give you that it's fine it's fine and lucia just like or Trixie pulls her mask back over her face <laughs> Just like sits down, starts pouring over the like notes and paperwork she has. If the plan goes well, they'll never see us. If it doesn't, we have an advantage. We're intimidating. She just looks you up and down and kind of like tilts her head back and forth. Yeah, intimidating. Nice mask, though. Thank you. Uh, we'll, we'll wear masks. Is that what? okay? Hold on, hold on. And um, like noticing everyone's wearing a mask, like oh crap, okay, yeah, I'm the, I'm the only one that's not wearing a mask. Um, give me a sec. I think I brought one, and he's gonna like um ruffle through his bag, and he's gonna he's just mumbling to himself, like I'm pretty sure Aunt had like a Phantom of the Opera mask. I quickly borrowed that, and he pulls out like a um a half, a half um half mask like from the Phantom of the Opera, and like just kind of <laughs> places that on. He goes, okay, is, is this good? Yes, very intimidating. Thank you. I like it. It stands out against all the all the, the black in the ensemble. We're going to get caught. We're going to get caught and we're going to get arrested. <laughs> and that's the end of our careers. It was the only mask I had. Vivi reflexively puts her hand over her mouth. Even though she's wearing a mask, she does the to cover her mouth to not show that she's laughing. <laughs> it was the only one I had. It was either that or a Frankenstein mask. And I feel like that would have been a lot worse. Yeah, this works better. Uh, and Karen's not actually dressed up in anything special because she is, uh, so, uh, I just, I, I feel like it probably would be best if I didn't go on this mission with everybody, partly because I'm the only one who doesn't have powers or super cool, uh, uh, hacking and robot abilities. Um, and also because if all of you do get caught, I think it would be useful to have someone on the outside who can pull back up for you. That makes the sense. eyes in the sky. I like it. 
Mm -hmm. Exactly. That's they. You have to have an eye in the sky. The movies say so. Yeah. Also, my my aunt will almost definitely call. So just say I'm asleep or something. I don't know. I actually didn't think this far ahead. Oh, here. Um, and she she rifles around through some of the like cords and like devices on her desk and pulls out like a uh, portable recorder. Um, and she says, "Here, quick, snore a little bit into this." Oh, okay. This is okay. Okay, and he's gonna he's gonna take and just start snoring <laughs> into the recorder. <laughs> like, okay, cool. This is part of the plan. Okay, cool. Yes, and <laughs> she <laughs> and she she points it around to everybody else in turn. Some Ferris Bueller type like mess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, after she gets all of everybody's uh, like snoring samples, she goes around and like opens up one of her closets and starts pulling out like a bunch of pillows and blankets to set up like fake like <laughs> people lying in their sleeping bags oh my god <laughs> <laughs> is it just like the movies it's gonna be perfect it's gonna be great and also if it isn't perfect and great i will be there to get you out of it somehow okay good Cass, you have the um communicator device that i that we set up um i'm gonna say that the, they've coordinated about having like a contact back to karen's place <laughs> yeah that makes sense i think yeah. it Cass is like, yeah, I got it set up and everything will be fine because if we get caught breaking into Crimson Signal, then I'll never be able to go to college and that'll be the end. So it's not going to happen. Oh, I didn't, I didn't think about that. Okay, well, I wish you all the best of luck. The last bus is leaving soon, so you should probably all get ready or however you're planning to get there. I'm going to take the bus. <laughs> Yeah, I think yes. I want to take the bus as well. I don't want to leave my bike there. The bus is fine. I mean, it's the last bus of the night, so it'll get us there. This is this shady-ass group traveling on the bus. <laughs> but then I, like, <laughs> I take a sweater, like, out of my backpack and put it on. <laughs> See, I wasn't totally yeah. unprepared. Does anybody have a hoodie? <laughs> the people who are transformed can transform their outfits on the fly while transformed. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> That's true. Otherwise, Lucia was just going to, like, create an illusion of a hoodie for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Provides no actual warmth, just covers your outfit. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, what What kind of, like, gem in the holograms take off would this show be if you couldn't change outfits on the fly? That's a really good point. Yeah. Showtime synergy, so I'm just going to be wearing, like, <laughs> jeans and a sweatshirt. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Except my shoes are sparkly. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, Jaden just takes off his mask and goes, okay, I should probably take this off for Yeah, now. then the okay, people in hoodies laser. and such don't stand out as much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's all classical magical girl stuff. Okay. You all manage to catch the, the last bus out of Karen's neighborhood that goes across town towards the downtown area, which Crimson Signal headquarters is not far away from. And you get there relatively without incident. Like, maybe you get a few strange looks from, like, the few, like, late night travelers who are on the bus as well. Uh, but mainly just because y'all are teenagers and nobody trusts teenagers on the bus. That's it. So you all get off. Uh, you make your way over to where the Crimson Signal building is. Uh, and you make your way around the perimeter, making sure to avoid, like, paths that Angie has seen, like, guards walking. And you make your way towards the entrance in the back that you want to access. What do you do from here? I switch back to the cat suit. Oh, oh yeah, okay, mask. <laughs> Jaden ruffles through his bag and puts the mask back on. And then I also put on a mask, but it's like fancier somehow. <laughs> <laughs> Vivi's outfit was just generically black enough that she could pull the, the mask down and just looked like a scarf, so she's she just pulls that back up again when they're off the bus. Perfect. And Jaden kind of like stares at the door and turns to trick and just goes... So we're gonna try to pick the lock, I'm guessing? Whoa. Yeah, so I think our best bet... Mm, there's a couple ways we could do this. There's a couple things we need to figure out. We definitely need to take out the cameras, and I can handle that. Um, I'm a little worried about the security guards because they do have anti-power wristbands, so we definitely need some hands on deck for that. I could probably deal with those. Some of them, not all of them. As I could probably do with up to three, mm. if I'm lucky. Okay, sounds good. Um, and then we also need to have a code for the lock into 
this like area that we're trying to get into. Like I can get us in, but there's a second door and we're going to need a code for that. So Cass, you and I are on that, or I think that might just be a you thing. I'm not the best with computers, not going to lie. Um, mm. But otherwise, I think that's all I've got. So where to first? Um, I guess we try to go in. I can, I can pick a lock. I can pick a lock. I can do this. Yeah, like, are you watching for, like, guard activity or, like, just looking for a clear moment when you can get to the door when it's, like, not as monitored? Yeah, exactly that. Waiting uh, to, like, dash in. Yeah, we know kind of, we have a rough idea of when the shift is going to change. Okay. Um, and also, just for this session, I know this is not something you're really supposed to do in masks, uh, but I'm going to do it because I think this um, session calls for it. Just to avoid rolling industry espionage constantly, um, uh, for certain activities that don't <laughs> strictly fit that move, I'm just going to ask you to do uh, probably like superior checks or like other skill or like other stat checks like like you would do in like D&D or whatever. Uh, just to see if you succeed yeah. at certain tasks. Okay. Works. Sounds good to me. So in, in this case, if you're wanting to like sneak towards the door, uh, I'm going to ask who like I'm going to ask whoever is leading the charge to roll a superior check. Before we go, as at least while we're going up to the door, because that is outside and very visible and there's like, what, six of us? <laughs> there's like a big group. <laughs> Can Trixie try to cloud the group in invisibility? Like, can she make the group invisible, at least while we're, like, sneaking up to the door? Absolutely, that is a thing you can try to do. Cool, 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 cool. That, um, that is the type of thinking I like to see. Thank you. Um, that is a power, so... Yes, it will definitely be okay. and unleash your powers to do that, because the obstacle that you're trying to overcome, you're overcoming with your powers. Cool. Ooh, all right. Not Very bad. Nice. That was a 10. So awesome. you do pretty much exactly that. You you describe the use of your powers to do this. So I think, like, Trixie, like, motions everybody. She does, like, the little hand signal. We're moving, we're gathering, and we're moving out. And as she kind of, like, twirls her hand in, like, a circle, her, like, fingers, like, in a circle motion for the signal, like, sort of prismatic light seems to shine through like this sort of a beam of um have you ever seen like crystals and like like a prism like a rainbow prism go through and the lights kind of not fully a rainbow yeah. but it shines through like that yeah diffraction mm -hmm. yeah so you all kind of like see that shine through like her fingertips and it hits you all not like a big beam of light but it shines towards you all and you're all invisible and she like guides you all over um, to the door. And I guess I'll try to pick the lock. I don't know if this is even that kind of a door. We'll find out. Okay. Well, when you get to the, the door, you do find that it is uh, a relatively conventional lock. Um, so all of the mm. higher tech locks tend to be inside. So let's see. Uh, I probably, <laughs> again, this would be, I'm just going to ask you to roll a straight superior check. Awesome. Nice. Got it. That's an 11. Very good. Yes. All right. So the, the unsurprisingly, the delinquent gets through a lock in no time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, just just skills you pick up around the house. Um, and yeah, so I pick the lock, push the door open. I think we can all see each other at least. And I like motion like, go, go, go for you all to like rush in. Yeah, it's like invisibility cloak rules. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah we all go in. Yeah, or I go in. And, yeah, and I'll say that because it's that it's those rules, you can remain invisible, but only as long as you stay close to Lucia. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay, cool. So you, you have to move in this kind of awkward, like, group formation. Fair enough. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody has to remain relatively clumped together. Okay. Okay, so we hurry in. Yeah, we hurry in. So how do we want to do this? Like, we can either stay together and all be invisible, or I can try to go take out the cameras and then we can move more freely around. I think taking out the cameras would be good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I agree. Okay. Um, so while I do that, I think maybe some uh, if we're going to split up, some other people should probably try to 
figure out like maybe this guard situation or maybe some computer that like Cass can, I don't know, like hack into and try to figure out any codes we might need. Yeah, as you as you go into the dark lobby, like this basically where this hallway you're, you've entered leads to, uh, it leads into sort of the backside of the big um, Crimson Signal lobby. It looks more or less the same as when you all saw it during the tour. And you see, again, there's guards posted near the secret area door. There's uh, one or two more just generally patrolling around the area because it's a fairly large area. And you presume if there are more guards, they're probably positioned elsewhere in the building. But none of them can see you right now and you're keeping your voices down. Okay, what is our number one priority? It's getting data, right? I'm trying to speak quieter because <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Yes. We need we need yes. more more information. Right. Um, in that case, we really wanted to get into the secret room. So or the secret area, the one that uh you and Queen Bee saw. Yeah. They had guards in front of there, so there was definitely something in there. Mm-hmm. Do we have a way to hack in and download any information well that's the biggest problem is like there's that door but then when i was scoping it out there's another door behind it and that door requires a code okay so so. i think we need to hit up a different area first Mm -hmm. i think that maybe we should check out the r d department so i think all the security information is down in the basement I can head down to the basement, take out the cameras, and while I'm working on that, the rest of you all can go up to R and D. Um, are you sure you can take out the cameras on your own? Because I imagine there are probably security guards down there watching cameras, right? I am highly capable. I I don't I don't I didn't mean to I didn't mean it that way. I didn't think you weren't. Um, maybe maybe one of us should should go with you just in case. Yeah. Uh, I can go with you and. If we're spotted by any guards, it'll be better to have two of us than one. Yeah. I mean, I think it's better to have more people with Cass, like Bane Raven and Queen Bee and Jaden, if he transforms, could definitely all, like, you know, hold it down. Um, And you're like a one-woman army by yourself. So having you with me doesn't sound that bad. Uh, uh, Okay, yeah. Let's do it then. Yeah. Okay, I probably okay. I probably should transform then. Okay, hold on, and he's gonna he's gonna <laughs> um, transform real quick. Yeah, it's um, good to do this while you're behind the invisibility shield. <laughs> yeah, so I'm gonna raise um, superior because it's a minus two right now, and I feel like we're gonna need that. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> he's a little bit higher at some point, and I'm gonna lower mundane. Okay. Um. Uh, actually, before you do this. Before you do this, um, I'm actually going to ask you to roll assess the situation just because, like, you your transformation can't be seen right now. But as I recall, your transformation has a lot of elements that could possibly be heard. So I think I, w- I want you to check and uh, see if you would know, like, what you're like, <laughs> if you're doing this carefully enough. Okay, what do I need to roll? Uh, assess the situation would be superior. Ah, oh, damn it. That's my worst <laughs> stuff. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Oh, uh, it's going to be an absolute failure. Oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. Okay. Sorry to do this right off the bat to you. It just occurred to yeah, me because, like, fair. you have all this <laughs> fire and wind and earth coming up out of the ground, and, like, <laughs> it's cool, but it's also, like, kind of obtrusive. Uh, so, <laughs> on a miss, uh, you you think it's fine. Uh, you're, you're totally protected by the barrier. Go ahead. <sighs> This is awesome. Okay, um, I'm going to raise, I'm going to lower Savior and raise Superior. All right. <laughs> Sounds like a good plan. Uh, uh, yeah, as <laughs> I can see, this, this is how the, the thought process goes as you're transforming. Like, you, you start transforming and you're like, wait, I guess I should really start thinking, like, about this. What are my, what's, what's the smart thing to do? And you realize, uh-oh, <laughs> I probably shouldn't be doing this right now. Yeah. As all your, like, elements start going off and, like crackling of flames and whooshing of wind and you definitely get like heads turning towards the empty area where you all are right away oh shoot okay i didn't think about that Jaden, you could have transformed before we entered the high security building i'm sorry i'm sorry I... i'm not good at this kind of stuff um okay. we should probably move from the 
from the place where all the noise came from. Yeah. Yes. Let's go. Yeah. Or actually, quickly before we before we move on, I want to double check with Drag. Mm-hmm. Um, do you think realistically Jaden would have thought to transform before going in? I want to give you a chance to do this because I feel like I'm oh, being really mean not. to you by pointing out that he didn't. No, you're good. No, <laughs> okay. you're abs- no, he absolutely would not have. <laughs> okay, I just want to make not sure. I'm um, thought to do it beforehand. That, that that you're not being held back by like me making a mean GM choice. <laughs> No, 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 it wasn't me and Jim and Trace. No, I, he he does not know how to break the rules properly. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> so he's just like, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm going by the, I'm flying by the seat of my pants right now. Sure, I just wanted to ch- uh, check in and make sure. So let's we're good to proceed then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you've got uh, guards. The two that are like not near the secret room door are starting to move towards your area, uh, and they're talking into their walkie talkies. Like we, we've detected something. Oh, sorry about that. We gotta go. I could try to distract them. I have uh, pocket bees. Oh yes, yes you do. You have your little Altoid tin full of yeah. bees. <laughs> if I can get one to sting one of them, like in the face, they'll be distracted for a while. Ooh, yeah, definitely. Also, that's uh, <laughs> good for like getting past anti-power stuff because a bee isn't a power; it's just a bee. Yeah. Oh, true. Okay, uh, so to do that, um, I'm going to say, is that going to be a directly engaged? Or if, I think because they're not directly attacking you yet, I'm just going to say that's an unleash your powers. Perfect. Okay. <sighs> yes. All right, so that's a seven. Uh, and on a seven with unleash your powers, you can either mark condition or the effect is unstable or temporary. The way that the effect could be temporary is that bees are pretty fragile and easily squashed. So would you prefer that or would you prefer to mark a condition? I have already two condition marked. I You will be remembered, Heather. Oh, oh. <laughs> salute to Heather, the bee. Uh so yes, you you what well, well you need there's two guards. Are you are you sending out two bees to do this? No, I think I'm sending one only one because uh, I hope that one guard getting stung and starting to like complain and curse would distract the other one long enough. Oh, sure, sure. I only have like three pocket bees, two now, so. Oh, sure. All right. Well, describe the the heroic sacrifice of Heather the bee for us, please. Heather buzzes around the guard from behind, then flies in front of them, distracting one, and then just making a beeline straight for the nose of the other one. Beeline. I'd go for the throat, but that could be dangerous. I don't know if they're allergic, so. That's fair. Nose is maximum pain so, and. Sorry, it sounds like the, the sting is going on like the, the, near the eyes or the nose, or. Yeah, just to the side of the bridge of the nose, right under the eye. Cool. So I'm going to say that part works. So the one guard had the bee in their face and be like, oh god, what the fuck is that? And the one gets stung like, ah! And isn't like super allergic to bees, but is mildly allergic. And like, so the area immediately does start itching and they're like, oh god, oh no, ah, what? And they, they reach for their eye and the other guard doesn't know exactly what happened. So they're going to their comrade like, what happened? What happened? And the one who's checking in on the other guard activates their anti-power wristband shield so that uh, he can check on his uh, on his partner without being uh, bothered by any potential powers in the area, because now they are suspecting that someone with powers is here. Okay. But they are not coming towards you anymore at the moment, so you do have an opportunity to scatter uh, if need be. Let's move away. Let's go. And fast. Mm-hmm. Scatter! <laughs> Are you literally scattering, or is uh, the invisibility bubble just moving somewhere else for now? Scatter in a uniform formation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's not what scatter means. <laughs> That's not what scatter means. Scumper. I'm just going to, like, hold uh, Trixie's hand so that I always know where she is. Aww. Oh my god, yes. <laughs> Wait, no. <laughs> Lucia, like, holds onto your hand so tight. Lucia, oh no. not Trixie. Aww. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> so there there are a bunch of doors in this lobby that lead out into different areas of the building from the lobby you could run towards uh, boardroom and offices area the product show floor or closer to the secret area which way are you going or there are doors leading to other floors like and elevators mm. I know I need to get to R&D 
I think Trixie's gonna head towards the stairs because stairs go down and basements are down. Yeah, we should probably get to a stairwell before our two groups split. All right, so I'm gonna say you get to the stairwell, okay? And Trixie, use you use your illusion powers to make it look like the door stays closed as you go through the door, uh, so they don't know which door you've gone through. Oh yeah, definitely. I do that all the time at home. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> <sighs> okay. I'm sorry. It's fine. It's fine. The plan's not ruined. We can still go through with the plan. We just need to make sure the thing we absolutely need the most is gotten first. Because now our time is really limited. Yeah, so Vivi and I should head downstairs right away. Um, and I guess for now, try to sneak around. I'll send you a text when like we take the cameras out. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Um, stay safe, everyone. You too. Stay safe. Take care. Mm -hmm. Queen Bee is sweating. I reluctantly let go of Trixie's hand. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> Trixie like looks up at you, and her like face is all scrunched up in determination. And she's like, "It's okay. I got this. Vivi and I will take care of each other." And uh, Angie takes. Um, sorry, Bane Raven takes a breath. <laughs> And then she, like, punches her palm, and she's like, okay, we're ready, too. Come on, everyone. And then she takes a few steps, and then she's like, where are we going? <laughs> <laughs> I'm assuming the R and was it R&D? R&D. Yeah, R&D. Okay, let's go there first. Yeah, it sounds like I think we'll follow um, Team R&D upstairs first, and then we'll check back in with uh, basement team in a bit and see how their efforts with the cameras go. Alright, so uh, the lot of you who are going upstairs head up a couple of floors. You know from your plans that R&D is going to be on the third floor, so not too much of a hike at least. Uh, so you head up there. Uh, what are you doing upon getting to the door to the third floor stairwell? I was going to open it and then step through it. <laughs> Are you going to, I mean, like, are you going to check and see if there's any other guards or, like, take any other precautions? I mean, kind of, but Cass doesn't know what she's doing. Fair, she never thought she'd teenagers. break into a building before. Yeah. Wow, Cass and Jaden are in the I same think, boat. Um, <laughs> we have no <laughs> idea what's going on. Well, Angie's there. just going to step in because she was the one that was, like, watching for the guards. Oh, thank God. So she's going to be mm. like, hold on a sec, we got to check for guards. Oh yeah, okay. Oh yeah. And then, <laughs> but they were downstairs. They're, on, they're probably on every floor. What we're counting on is if they're sleeping or don't care about their jobs very much. That works out for us. All right. Yeah. So I am gonna have Angie roll assess the situation at this point. Okay. Very good. Hey. Whew. So you've got an eleven on that. All right, which questions off the assess the situation list would you like to ask? You can ask, what here can I use to blank? What here is the biggest threat? What here is in the greatest danger? Who here is most vulnerable to me? And how could we best end this quickly? I'm going to say, what here is the biggest threat? Okay, so on this floor, uh, you were good to check for guards because there are definitely uh, also guards on this floor. You are lucky because... Uh, they do seem to be like the type who are a little less um, vigilant than the ones downstairs um, because they're less expecting of people to get up here uh, than the lobby guards are. So you do have one who's just kind of like playing on their phone and leaning against like the wall <laughs> of one of the R&D labs and another one who is doing like a patrol, but they look kind of bored. So they are the biggest threats on this floor right now. Okay. The other question is, how could we best end this quickly? And I guess mostly, like, how do we just make sure that the guards don't see us? Uh, since one of them is, like, right near the door of the, the lab that you want to get into, the best way to end this quickly would be to, like, find some way to, like, subdue the guards before they can call other guards. 
Okay. Because they're too close for you to get by unseen without an invisibility shield. Okay, so there's one that's kind of doing a patrol down the hall? Yeah, up and down, up and down the hall, kind of. One is, I think I'm going to say the one that's sitting near the lab door is on one end of the hall and the other one is on the other end of the hall. Okay. Yeah, we're going to want to take them both out. Yeah, and you're watching all this from, like, the window in the, like, stairwell. Okay. Yeah, so I tell the crew everything, and then I tell them that we have to knock out the two guards. So that okay. they don't call um, anyone. Should should we deal with the bracelets? I think I can deal with the bracelets. I think as long as I knock them out before they can react... Uh, they might even not think to use them, but maybe we can steal their bracelets um, after. I mean, I can, um, I, I can might... steal their bracelet from here. I can see them. Um, I won't actually even need to go down there. Sorry, hmm? Alice, were you trying to say something there? Yeah, no. Oh, I think it's very in character to talk over Cass. Do it all the time, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Cass like has her hand up and she's like, I might have something that can help. Huh. And... I, as the brain, have a move called Always Prepared. When you have a chance to restock your supplies, you can hold up to two gadgets, and when you unleash your powers by producing a brand new minor invention or a gadget from your supply, spend a gadget and roll plus superior instead of plus freak. I was looking forward to this. <laughs> yeah. She pulls out a little, like, orb speaker and goes, I have... I mean, it, it's experimental, so I can't promise that it'll work, but it's a prototype. It's supposed to help me get to sleep. You know, sometimes your thoughts just keep racing. So if we roll this Ooh. out, I should be able to lullaby them. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Let's try it. Yeah. So Katz cracks the stairway door open, rolls the speaker out, and then presses a couple buttons on her mixer board to get it to start playing a high-tech lullaby kind of thing. All right. And you're, you'll be protected from the sound of it uh, yourselves because you'll be behind the door. Okay, so you're going to, uh, you are technically rolling Unleash Your Powers, but you're rolling with Superior, as I understand it. Yep. And then that will reduce your gadget count to one gadget? One. Yes. Yep. Okay. That reduces it to one, and when I hit zero, I mark a condition. Okay. Awesome. So that gave you an eight. So this can be either unstable mm -hmm. or temporary, or you can mark a condition. I think I'm going to mark afraid because this is becoming incredibly, increasingly more real the further we're going, and I am way over my head now. Entirely fair. But yes, otherwise, your, your plan works absolutely flawlessly. Your, your tech is very well designed um, and very quiet, so you're able to like send it out into the hallway at first unnoticed, and then it starts playing. Uh, what kind of music does it start playing? Or what sound? It's kind of like a synthy version of a lullaby. Nice. I'm going to have fun looking for the music for that. <laughs> Lo-fi hip-hop? Yeah. <laughs> Fall asleep too. Yeah, I, was about, I was about to say it's like... Um, Lo-fi to heist to. Lo-fi binaural beats to fall asleep to. Oh, yeah. Sure, those are words. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm sure they mean something to someone. <laughs> I mean, they're binaural is when it... I don't know how actually effective it is, but it's this idea that like playing different frequencies in each ear that are, are specific frequencies can affect your mood or your brain just by mm -hmm. hitting specific frequencies. So, right, and this is this is an alternate superhero universe. So, like, regardless of mm -hmm. whether it works in our universe or not, I have no idea. Uh, let's say it definitely works in the Super Idols universe, <laughs> and this is the principle the device operates on. Is it? generates uh its soothing high-tech lullabies at the guards um uh, and it, initially they're like oh what did they start piping in music for us to listen to oh god is the boring existence that i lead finally going to have some life into and they they both slump <laughs> to the ground oh god yes nice job cass yeah and i try to give cass a high five uh, Cass holds her hand up for the high five, but it's probably gonna hurt. <laughs> okay, a right, high five. Ah, oh, thank you. Sorry, oh. she, sorry, she sorry. Hand, like... I don't know my own strength. Yeah, yeah. You're very strong. So okay, let's go. 
Yes. Okay. Hey there, everyone. I hope you're enjoying the episode so far. I'm going to try and do this middle bit uh, mostly unscripted this time and see how it goes, just to cut down on the amount of time I spend uh, writing these bits. Uh, so I'm going to stop the pre-written script dialogue now. Oh boy, flying without a parachute. This is fun. Um, I have a couple things to tell you about this time uh, in the middle bit. These middle bits where we, we have wonderful, intimate fun times. Uh, just you and me in our in our wonderful parasocial relationship. Oh, oh goody. Um, <laughs> so, one of the first things I'd like to tell you about is we recently had a Super Idols crossover episode. Oh, it's, yeah, no, I was I was surprised too. <laughs> uh, it's sort of in a similar vein to the March Maskness crossover in that it's it's maybe not entirely canon to the story, uh, but it is just a great ton of fun to listen to regardless. We crossed over with the Masks podcast Moon Harbor Heroes, our, our good friends who we did meet during March Maskness this year. <laughs> So I was actually over there playing Sasha Samuel, aka Sasha Lemuse, in their Classics Issues 3 and 4. Uh, and not just the regular person, character, or whatever that you saw in episode 12. Uh, actually a young teenage version of herself that would be suitable for playing the game of masks, the game of teen superheroes. We, we played a scenario where she and a bunch of other weirdos defended the opening ceremony of the 2008 Beijing Olympics from supervillains. Uh, if you're worried about the Olympics setting, uh, don't worry that we are not necessarily Olympic stands. That just happens to be where the story takes place. And well, you'll see, there's more to it. <laughs> anyway, so again, uh, this episode was extremely fun to play. And again, despite it not really being canon, it uh, definitely will uh, help me infer a lot more about Sasha's character in canon whenever we see her in the story again. Uh, and I, I really wanted to establish a little more, a little bit more uh, world building about what she was like in her prime and sort of what the the vibe would have been like back in the early days of Super Idols, even though this is a slightly different universe version of her. <laughs> so yes, you can find the link to that in the description for this episode. Uh, again, it's Moon Harbor Heroes Classics Issues 3 and 4. You do not have to have listened to Classics Issues 1 and 2. Those are entirely separate storylines from last year uh, and you don't have to have listened to Moon Harbor in general to understand this the, all the information just like in regular good comic book fashion you're you can get all the information you need right at the top of the episode it's all right there for you very self-contained <laughs> so you can uh, yeah just enjoy that wow S scripting these things definitely cuts out unnecessary word and, and run on sentences but <laughs> You're here for the raw Aaron experience. That's the appeal of this bit right now. Yes. Anyway, this that was not the only podcast that I've been on recently. Uh, you might be interested if you are specifically listening to Super Idols because you are a Magical Girl fan. I was recently on the podcast Sparkle Side Chats with Magical Girl Ayu, who I've mentioned in previous episode. Um, it, it won't be for a while because we're way ahead on recordings, but um, they will actually be appearing on the podcast on Super Idols eventually. So to get a, a jump start on knowing who the, the wonderful Ayumi is, uh, why don't you go listen to their podcast? Um, Sparkle Side Chats is a interview podcast about magical girls and the fans who love them. And for this episode, I went on the show to talk about Mahono Mako-chan, one of my favorite old retro 1970s Magical Girl series that I don't really even know how to describe it to people who don't know what it is. It, I will say it is slept on, but not necessarily because it's good, but it is interesting to talk about, even if you have no idea what it is. So um, I highly recommend going to listen to that episode. We had a lot of fun um, and covered a lot of interesting ground in that episode. and. Ayu is just a always wonderful, lovely person who is accepting of all Magical Girl fans of all stripes from around everywhere. So, great, yeah. <laughs> Again, link to that will be in the description for this episode. And of course we have our obligatory Patreon plug here. You can support us on Patreon as always over at patreon.com slash Aaron Cerise. Uh, One dollar or more per month will get you extra audio, like before and after session talks for various episodes, and 
trust me, you're not very far into this episode yet, but you'll see. Um, you're gonna want some some of that extra talk for this episode. <laughs> I'm gonna try and get it out as fast as I can. It's not always up right away, but I do my best to get it up eventually for y'all. Uh, but yeah, the, there's a lot of interesting after, especially after session talk for this episode. So if you are our one dollar patrons or more, uh, you will be able to listen to that and enjoy. <laughs> And if you support us at the $5 level or more, you not only get that before and after session talk, you get access to entire uncut, unfancified versions of episodes with lots of stuff that gets cut out from the final cuts of the episodes. And you can hear all of our all of our rules questions and side tangents and weird <laughs> weirdness that doesn't make the final cut. So if, you, if that interests you, why don't you support us at the $5 level? Uh, also, if you support us at the $5 level, you get your name shouted out on the podcast, like so. Thank you so much to Misty, Tanner S, Eric Kune, Chris T, Liv C, hi Liv, Jan Cuttlefish, Wolfie, The Joiner, Matthew F, and Aurabolt. And before we hop right back into the show, um, our ad for this week is The Game is Afoot, who coincidentally, again, has some relevant Super Idols content that you'll probably want to listen to this week. Uh, their most recent episode is a Masks one-shot where they played with our custom Super Idols moves, and it is adorable. <laughs> they did a full-on Super Idols universe thing, so if you want more Super Idols and you're not getting it from us because we only come out every three weeks, um, go listen to the game as a foot. All right, I will let you go now. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this middle bit. Uh, give me some feedback. If you prefer the scripted versions of these, or if you just like me rambling. Thanks, and enjoy the rest of the episode. It's an episode! Hi! Welcome to The Game is Afoot. This is a podcast where queer guests... I'm back, baby! <laughs> ...play games. I pick my jaw up off the floor real quick. <laughs> real quick. Put that back on. And do an interview. My secret is... This is published on the first and third Sunday of every month, so come join us. And I hope you have a good time. Bye! Alright, um, and before you head down this hallway, I'm going to check in briefly with Vivi and Trixie, uh, just to see if you have to worry about cameras in this hallway. <laughs> good call, good sure. call. Alright, how are you both managing as you make your way to the basement? I think Trixie still has her invisibility up, at least for the two of them, so that's mm -hmm. probably kind of helpful. <laughs> for sure. Yeah, and down there you find uh, basically what you expected. You find, like, standard basement areas. Like, there's you'll see doors to, like, boiler rooms. You see there's an access way that leads to, like, a sewage area. It's generally kind of dusty and musty. There's janitorial closets and whatnot. There's going to be a break room area somewhere down there. Um, and, of course, eventually you happen upon the entrance to a security bay. Okay, um, I look over at Vivi to, like, check, like, okay, you ready? I'm ready. You ready? I'm ready. Cool. And, um, I'm going to illusion, or, like, cast another illusion so that when we go through the door, it doesn't look like it opens, and, um, I'm gonna sneak in and look to see what the situation is, how many guards are there, how many are sitting by the computer, all that good stuff. Cool, cool. So as you do this, I will, again, also have you roll to assess the situation. Cool. Okay. Uh -uh. Okay, that's an eight. So you get one off the assess the situation question list. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then I also get one off of my own abilities. Oh, yes, you do, um, of course. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I'm first gonna ask here, what here is the biggest threat? All right, so... Definitely, you see there is one person, as expected, watching the security cameras. They don't look quite as out of it as the ones we just described on the third floor. Like, they, mm -hmm. they don't look like they're, like, hyper-vigilant, but they are regular vigilant. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so they are, they're watching the cameras, and they haven't noticed the door yet because they didn't see it open, and you were careful to open it relatively quietly. So they, if they do catch you, they will be the greatest danger in here. Fair enough. Um, and then from Criminal Minds, I'm going to ask, 
how could I best infuriate or provoke this person? Mm. Like, oh. I guess, is there any sort of, like, extra sneaky way I could do it? Like, <laughs> I, I, it's kind of the, the energy behind that, because, yeah, how could I best infuriate or provoke them? Uh, I'm, I think you notice that there is, like, since this is a kind of a dusty, musty basement, um, you notice that there is, like, a leak coming from one of the pipes overhead, and you notice that every now and then the guard looks up at it like they're kind of annoyed at it. And I think if you made that more of an annoyance for them, then they would probably leave their seat to try and attend to it and be like, like, take care of that. Okay. And you said it's like leaking every just like now and then? Yeah. Okay. It's like, oh, um, that's so I'm... annoying. <laughs> <laughs> I am going to try to use my abilities to make that drip like a little bit faster. Um, not break it all the way, but, like, make it from, like, a slow drip to, like, a faster, more annoying one that's probably, like, maybe hitting them. <laughs> Just, oh, like, sure. annoying. So this would be, like, your your luck abilities making it yes. more, like, uh, oh, yeah. how unlucky. The thing is starting to break down more. Yeah, exactly. Like, how unlucky is it when you get your socks wet and it's like, you know, you, just because you stepped in a puddle, that kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. And this, th let's just, let's say this guard is like, th this is a cozy office space for them. They're not wearing their shoes. They don't have to. Ew, but that's fair. <laughs> They're Same just lounging energy. in their sock feet. <laughs> feet up. Yeah, totally. Um. Okay, cool. And they do have their shoes next to them for quick slip on, but yes. Awesome. They're going to need that because it's a 10. So they need to get out of here. <laughs> okay. Maybe. Uh, so know. it's a relatively <laughs> large room. So when they, they notice that the, the water is starting to drip even more, that like the pipe is maybe they're not sure if it's going to burst or not, but they know that it's suddenly starting to burst more and they give a deep, like, annoyed sigh, like, ugh. <laughs> and they, they put on their shoes and they're like, ah, oh, fine. <laughs> Um, and they, they roll up their sleeves like they're going to have to like do some inspection of the pipe. And they have moved away from the camera bay. So that that will give you an opportunity to access the bay. And also to like if you want to further incapacitate them, their back is turned to you. Um, I think Trixie just kind of like looks at Vivi trying to get like Vivi's read on the situation. Because she'll knock them out. If that's what we think we should do. I think there's there's like a silent tilting my head towards the guards, like implicit like should we should we engage, should we take them out? Because Trixie is the the expert here. Yeah. Um You know what? One less problem right now is less problems down the road. So yes, Trixie like nods, like take them out. Okay. Um I think I'm going to use that doom sign right now. Okay. I've actually been looking. I have an idea of what could be a weird one-off power here, and I'm not sure if this is exactly an ability from another playbook, but I'm going to mark a doom sign, and I think Vivi is, is not quite intending it to happen in this way, but she tries to attack the guards with her, her powers in a less... Um, knifey way than <laughs> than she usually does and what's going to happen if this succeeds is her uh the sort of ribbon belt around her waist is going to fly off and like wrap around their heads oh and do like a like suffocation into unconsciousness or just like yeah oh, okay, to, cool. to just like try to try to knock them or yeah suffocate them until they until they pass out and Cool, cool. This there's no way this could possibly go wrong. <laughs> Absolutely not. All right. Uh, so do you just get to do that, or like, do you have to use unleash your powers to use that? Uh, I think I have to. I have to roll something. So I think unleash my powers is what I'm doing. It just lets me use a different power than I would usually have. That makes sense to me. All right. So go ahead and roll that. Oh, oh. Ooh, that's a six. That is a six. Um, and you only have one team point. Um, do you want Trixie to use it, or do you want to save it for the rest of the team later? Uh, I... Uh, I could use it selfishly. That is very tempting. I always forget that's um, a mechanic. 
Trixie's not going to use it because um, Mm -hmm. me, Liv, I feel like we should save it for Cass. God forbid something goes wrong during Cass's, like, hacking thing. (laughs) We're going to need it. That might be a little bit meta, a little bit above board, but... Yeah, well, Mm -hmm. maybe Lucia Mm -hmm. is focused on doing her part of it. Yeah, I also think that I only need one more potential to get an advancement. There we go. All sorts (laughs) of (laughs) meta reasoning going on. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, Uh, let me see how this goes. Um, And this is also definitely the ribbon thing is not something that Vivi knew she could do or actually intended to do, so... Okay, so here, here's how here's how this is gonna go. So describe you uh, d- sending the ribbon at this person. Um. Okay. So this is, it's sort of like, you know, a grappling hook, uh, or it, you know what it's it is. It's like the the cape in Doctor Strange. Right. Right. It yeah. It shoots off of her waist and tries to wrap around one of their heads yeah and and this is the only one in here so uh anyway yeah. Or, so, oh, okay yeah so you you do that and uh it looks like it's it's working like the the guard goes oh <laughs> uh, and he grabs at his face and is like trying to get it off uh, but there's too much cloth uh, and the magic is enhancing its like ability to like block air from getting in uh, and you mm-hmm. eventually notice him slump to the ground and when you pull this this cloth away, finally, you go to check um, and see that he's unconscious, um, and he is, but you also see that he's, like, not breathing. Like, he's not dead, but if you don't get him breathing again soon, um, he will be soon. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Um, I didn't... I, di- I didn't know I could do that. I didn't mean to do that. I... And I'm also going to have you mark afraid for this as well. Absolutely. Absolutely fair. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. There's like, it's fine. It's fine. Um, and Lucia goes over to this, or Trixie goes over to this person um, and just kind of like kneels down and checks to see if she's 15. I don't think she knows how to do CPR, but she's going to try. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, like you can, you both can, like you can hear a pulse, but like the the breath is not going in. Um, <laughs> so uh, you need to jumpstart that somehow. Oh, maybe we should have taken Jaden. Like, can't he do electricity, or is it only the four elements? Oh man. All right, so, um, so are you going to do a CPR thing, or like? <laughs> I'm so afraid to. Because one, I'm negative two mundane, and I technically still have a condition marked, which is angry. <laughs> but I can try to do CPR on this man's. I... Okay. Oh, no, we're gonna be murderers. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Uh, you didn't do it. Uh, are you are you helping in any way, uh, Vivi, or are you just like, uh, what's what's your um, state? <laughs> okay, I had I had an idea of what I could do, but it would be it would be Vivi acting instead of Trixie. Please take the wheel. Which yeah. is that uh, what I was looking to get with my advancement is to rearrange my labels as I please and add a add a plus one so that I can, you know, I can set all of my labels to whatever I want them to be, basically. Nice. Aaron, an hour ago, <laughs> this is a game where nobody dies. <laughs> okay, Text I'm... comments from Alice as the scene goes on. Uh, yes. Anyway, so you, you you're gonna rearrange your labels and add one. Yes. So um, I'll give you a sec to to set that up. Uh, I basically set my freak savior and superior to zero, and danger to one, and mundane to three. Okay. Yeah, this is making you feel like reminding you very much of your own like humanity and mortality in this moment. I'll accept that. Yeah, this is this is yeah. Valerie in this moment is going, oh god, oh god, why did I do this? I didn't. I shouldn't be here. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just. I'm just. A, I'm just a dumb kid. But also plus one danger because she's clearly a very dangerous dumb kid. Oh. Uh, and then I'm going to attempt to comfort or support the guard here. Okay, yeah, this is not quite what the usual comfort and support does, but it certainly is a support, for sure. Mm-hmm. 
Okay. That is a nine. Okay, so on a hit, uh, they hear you, so I guess that means you get their, the, their breathing again. And you don't get to have any benefit for yourself. This just works and you don't get any other benefit. I think that's what that means. Yeah, and I know that... Yeah, if this were like a villain with labels, then they would be able to, or with uh, with conditions, they would be able to clear a condition. But right. I, obviously, this card is not a villain. Yeah, they're not important enough for that. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, uh, but you do manage to like you you manage to like use your. I'm gonna. Are you using your powers or are you trying to like CPR them? I'm just trying to flashback memory to. Uh, you know what it is. It was. <laughs> One of those, um, what to do if you accidentally hurt someone with your powers videos that she saw. She, she's going, uh, uh, what was it? It was d- dance. Um, okay, don't panic. Uh, assess the situation. She's going through her head and, um, I, I, I think one, one of those videos had, like, a link to CPR instructions. So you managed to rack your brain and you get this information, like, just in your head, just in the nick of time, uh, and you use the information to successfully, like, do whatever is needed to get this man's, uh, breathing going again. We'll vague that out, because I don't know exactly how that works myself. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he is breathing again. Uh, he, is, he does look very out of it, though, because you just deprived him of oxygen for probably longer than he should have been. Uh, so it's gonna take him a bit to like actually come to, but he's not unconscious mm-hmm. anymore. Is he's 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 gonna be fine, right? He's he's gonna be okay. It's yeah, yeah. This, yeah. We're we're gonna be okay. Yeah, everything's gonna be okay. You did good. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna take care of the cameras. Okay. Um, and then well, you take a breather. I'm gonna take care of the cameras. We'll take a breather together, and then we'll go back. And find everybody, yeah? Okay. You did great. You did great. Um, And Trixie, like, runs over and starts to look at these cameras that I don't... We'll see how well she does. <laughs> everything's everything's going fine on our side. I don't know what you mean. Yeah, that's true. Everything's perfectly fine. <laughs> Lucia's been rolling great. Oh, don't say that out loud. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess would this count as an investigation or... Not really. Would it just be like a superior check, I wonder? And just double check the wording of my own move. <laughs> I mean, I'm just trying to take out the cameras, so... I, I think I'll just make it a superior check to see if it's successful or not. Yeah, I think so too. Okay. <laughs> this is seven. All right. So you, you managed to disable most of the cameras for now, but you're not sure how long it's going to last because it looks like they might be on like a timer system. Okay, Trixie takes out her phone and messages the Disc Idol group, took out the cameras with, like, a fist emoji. Don't know how long it's gonna last, like, scared sweating emoji. Hurry? And then she sends, like, a bunch of running people, because she's that teenager. Yeah, like, you can stay here for a little while longer if you wanted to spend more time to figure it out, but you, you disabled the cameras for now, at least, so that gives the other group an opportunity to move forward. Um, I... Th- I don't see the harm in us staying and trying to figure it out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Well, we'll come back to you. We'll give you a little bit of time to to figure this out as we go back and see how the other group is doing. And we'll give that'll give Phoebe some time to to grapple with the fact that she almost killed a man. Oh mm-hmm. no. <laughs> okay, she did. It. Okay, so we're kind of in the clear. And this happens just as you uh, took out the the guards and they slumped to the floor. Perfect timing. Ah. <laughs> <sighs> Wow, this is going well so far. Okay, yeah. let's go. Okay, I want to. Okay. I want to take one of their bracelets. I'm kind of kind of curious to, to see how that works. Good idea. Yeah, they're out, so you can just do that. Yeah, Jane's gonna like just take one of um, their bracelets and like hand one over to um, Cass and the other to um, Angie. Just... Okay. Okay. Um, where to next? Where's Where's R and D? I don't remember the blueprints. So it's near where, like, one of the other guards is slumped down by a door. That one. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm going to peek through. Is there a window in that one? There is a window. There's a, there's a little window in the door itself, and there's also a little, like, viewing-style window, which you, you've you seen through, uh, like, when uh, Angie and Queen Bee toured this building with their original Crimson Signal tour. 
This is right, what, it, what they right. would have been viewing th- the room through when they came. Oh, okay. Um, mostly I just want to make sure there's like nobody working overtime or anything like that. There's nobody in there. Yeah, actually, you're you're very relieved to find that there actually is nobody in there. That you, that you okay. took out the guards, so you've taken out everybody who is important in this area. Ah, uh, perfect. Okay, uh, nobody's in there. Okay. Let's go. Yeah, and the door is unlocked because the the guard was supposed to be <laughs> the protector of this room. <laughs> Can I poke our head inside? So you managed to make your way into the R&D lab. Uh, just to refresh what it looks like, it is, it is a fairly standard looking R&D lab. Like it looks fairly like walls are white. There's lots of like stations for research and, de- and development. There's machinery where there uh, needs to be like for m- working on like microchip and electronics technology. All overall looks very like sterile and clean. And of course there are computers kind of just like littered about everywhere where there need to be. Okay, so I'm sure, like, any one of these could get us the information we need. Like, there's probably a network we can hack into. I don't know, Castle. I'm just gonna watch the door. <laughs> Alright, I got- I'm on this. This is why I'm here. And Cass is going to go to the closest computer and plug her sample board thing, like, directly into it. And just start using that in lieu of a keyboard to just try and completely bypass the BIOS of the computer and jump right into the network. And I think Pollux pops up. Yeah. All right. That is technically your powers. So I'm going to call that an unleash your powers to do that. Cool. Great. Wonderful. Phenomenal. I'm so excited. <laughs> this is going to be awesome. Let's do this. So it's an eight. The breath I just let out in relief. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Um, would you rather uh, mark a condition or have this be unstable or temporary? Oh, I only have one condition, so let's mark another one. Sure. Um, doo, 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 doo. Let's go with insecure. Okay. Yeah. So your again, your technology, your technology is flawless. Your emotional state is what's fragile. <laughs> so you manage to use your your technology to to hack into the network and get past the security protocols. Mm-hmm. So you manage to find their, like, their, you go through their, like, file explorer system and go looking for important looking documents. Um, and what you find is you find mostly just, like, general, like, product information, like, products and research. Um, as you skim through the text of some of these files, they don't look that out of the ordinary. They just look like specs generally for, uh, for standard, like, electronics stuff. Um... The, the thing that most catches your eye there or as you're looking through various documents is uh, some of them mention that there is more information available at something called an SFT facility where further information is stored. And occasionally you will find mm. mentions of something like core technology, but they don't describe exactly what that is and they tend to refer to this SFT facility for more details. Mm. Great. Yeah. Um oh jeez. So yeah, Cass is gonna be like, okay, so uh I'm grabbing as much as I can. Uh Polly, can you just copy all these datas all this all these files to your like data drives and we can like comb through it later. But um it looks like a lot of their information is stored off site at some sort of SFT facility. I don't know what that means. Maybe server farm something. Yeah, there's no information on exactly what this is, what the, what it stands for, or like where it is, or it's, it just is a name. Uh, but as you're copying all this data, you do find one more very interesting, uh, very interesting to you piece of information as you're getting through more of these files. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that is, you find the schematics for an interesting little piece of tech uh, that is currently uh, being integrated into like some of their uh, headset technologies. Um, it's an auto-tuning system called AED, spelled A-O-E-D-E. It's an acronym, um, and mm-hmm. it says it's currently in early development stages. Uh, and you, you can see them on the most recent like notes regarding the product that it was most recently tested at a show starring Zero Degrees at the Paradise Center. Lies and blasphemy. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> they do not. No. 
Now, awesome. how do you react Perfect. to this, Cass? Um, well, I have a move here that says whenever I'm confronted by my shame, I either have to mark a condition or shift superior down and oh, danger no. up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Cass, like, freezes a moment, and I think she's got, like, the holographic screen projecting this information and the schematics are scrolling by and probably reflected in her glasses. It's very dramatic. Um, hmm. What I'm going to do is drop superior down and danger up because I think it hits her that she was kind of foolish to think, oh, I deleted it, it was gone, and everything was solved and fine because it's clearly out there. Yeah, I think that makes sense. <laughs> Uh, do you say anything out loud about this, or is this just, like, uh, freaking out? Uh, brief freaking out, but I think I brought another gadget for this, and by gadget I mean virus, Ooh. and I'm going to upload a virus oh. to their systems to yes. delete everything. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how this goes. Cool. So I spend my last gadget, which means I have to mark a condition. I'll mark guilty. Well, you still, you still had and then or I, I guess, yeah, roll. it's when you reach zero gadgets. Yeah, you're yeah, right. Yeah, when you hit zero yeah, you okay. have to mark a condition. <laughs> but I get to roll plus superior to unleash. Cool. It goes great. Oh, <laughs> awesome. I got a four. <laughs> oh no. Uh, what were we saying about it. using the team to point to help Yeah, Cass? it's a, a good thing we saved that. <laughs> I mean, would the team point even... Me yeah, manifesting. I don't think the team point would have helped. Um, exactly. Nope. With yeah, a four, yeah. there's no helping that. Sorry. Uh, I mean, maybe Cass will level up. I did. <laughs> oh, oh no. That okay. was my fifth potential. Oh, oh dear. <laughs> it, it always feels like a bit of an accomplishment to have a guest character level up <laughs> yeah. during the session. And I've taken my moment Ooh. of truth. Ooh. Smart. Just in case. Okay, then. <laughs> what? Hmm. How can this possibly go wrong? I think my intention was for the virus to go off, like, later, so it doesn't go off right while we're in the computer system. But it's up to you how things go bad. Or maybe they don't. And what I wanted is just a horrible thing. <laughs> uh, I think this is going to work a little too well, is how this is going to work. Uh, so what your virus is going to do, you start it going through the system and it starts to, to delete the things you want it to delete, but then you notice that it's deleting other things that you didn't tell it to, uh, and it's starting to spread throughout the entire system, and it is going to just completely erase, uh, Crimson Signal's entire internal network, <laughs> and that is definitely going to set off an alarm. And you can't get any more information from their computer networks after this. And the alarm went off? And the alarm went off because uh, there was a trip for like if something like compromised their internal computer security systems that the building alarm would go off. Oh, oh my god. No. Oh, oh my gosh. What's happening? We gotta what's go. Happening? We happening? gotta go. <laughs> Come on everyone. Let's go. Okay. Oh, okay. crap. Oh crap. Oh yeah. crap. So first, uh, let's, uh, so you all, I assume, rush out of the mm -hmm. room. <laughs> yes. Uh, which way are you going? I'm going to go back to the stairwell back the way we came. Okay. And my goal is just to get into an emergency exit and get out of there. Uh, you can hear uh, as you start heading down, the, the, bottom, the door at the bottom of the stairwell is opened, and there are more guards that are starting to come up the stairs because the alarm alerted to them to the uh, security going off on the third floor. So they're heading up there okay. to meet you. Um, um, do we, we see any guards upstairs? Uh, I think you might actually, yeah, you might actually have a couple people who are coming down as well from another floor above you. Oh, boy. <laughs> I'm going to okay. say you have three guards coming from the bottom and two coming from the top. Do, oh, okay. I have an idea. Very weird idea. Um, I have a walkie-talkie in the race car. If I can use it to distract the guards to go in one direction, follow the sound, we maybe could just sneak, run down the stairs when they've passed. Hmm. That is so silly. It just might work. <laughs> Try it. Okay. Yes, and he's gonna, like, go for it. <laughs> run for his backpack and pull out like a... A race car that he got and then um, a pair of walkie talkies and tape and he's gonna like tape the walkie talkie to the car um, and keep the other one in hand and um, 
okay we probably should like i don't know hi is there a room that we can like jump back into or like yeah you can duck into like the you're between like the first floor and the whatever floor above you that they're coming from so you could probably deck into like the third or like the second floor below you hallway okay yeah and i'll like i'll set the race car down where we were first and then like duck down there and um i'm just gonna like once i hear that once if it sounds like they're close enough to like at least hear a a car a real race car (laughs) revving i'm gonna start um whispering down into the walkie-talkie that I have and then um because the volume is a bit higher on the actual walkie-talkie that's receiving I'm gonna have that um not blast it but be loud enough for them to be like okay there's something suspicious going on here and like basically race it down the hallway <laughs> the opposite direction All to right. us <laughs> well, I, I'd say uh, I think that works out to a provoke someone because you're trying to get them to yeah. do something specific <laughs> so I'm gonna Ooh. have you roll with that yeah it's still not my best roll uh, it's a minus one still. Mm-hmm. Um, I also love that this is Jaden's first instinct. <laughs> yeah, like I saw this in like Home Alone. I swear. <laughs> it's Home Alone shenanigans. Um, it's gotta work. I have a question. Can yeah. I have a plus one because I have a prop that I'm using? Yes, because you, this is you were prepared for this possibility yes. for this eventuality. Ooh. <laughs> okay, you were prepared it probably for this won't exact situation. Out of I will give you a plus things. one. <laughs> It probably won't help at all, but you know. Oh, oh no. damn it! Oh, damn no. it. Oh, no. Wait, no. if we is there enough? Not enough for a team point, huh? No, no you only need one team point. point. That's, that's a five, five. Oh, but that's there's no that. Oh god! Damn it! So the, unfortunately, your brilliant plan is just not going to work. Uh, you, as you're running away from the hallway, you can the, you can hear guards running up behind you in the stairwell. They're not distracted by this by these shenanigans whatsoever, and they know that it's quite obvious that the only place you could have gone was the second floor. So you can hear them uh, rushing towards that floor as you run away. Okay. So before we before we move forward with this, I'm gonna quickly flash over to the other group and see first what you were doing while. Uh, everybody was doing their R and D hack, and then we'll get the alarm going and see how you react to that. Right. Um, well, during the R and D hack, uh, Trixie was basically like combing back through everything, trying to figure out, okay, like mm-hmm. what did I do wrong? How can I make the cameras like permanently shut off? Like, how do I just turn them off altogether? Yada yada yada. Um, trying to see if she can figure that out. Okay. I think since this is more of an investigation, uh, like you're taking more time to like actually investigate how this works, I'll make I'll let you roll this as an industry espionage. Sure thing. Give me one second. Or or assess the situation. It's the same stat either way. Which whichever yeah. you want to roll, I'll say. Yeah, I was just pulling it up so I could see the um, the uh, questions. Okay, cool. A twelve. Somebody's Oof. rolling well, thankfully. <laughs> Don't say that out loud. <laughs> You're going to scare the dice. All right, I'll, say it. I'll give you the choice, actually. <laughs> actually. Do you want to use the question list for industry espionage or assess the situation? Mm, no, it's okay. I will use the industry espionage because there's two things that I want to use. Okay. One of them was going to be what sort of magic is involved in case there is any sort of extra super idle juice being pumped into Crimson Signal's, like, security system. Um, Because that would be good to know right about now before Mm. things get even worse. And then, what here is most useful or valuable to me? I guess useful more specifically. Yeah. So I think the most useful thing you find is definitely, as after some more investigation and figuring out what the buttons do and what the interface of the computer system is like, you finally manage to find the, like timer system that the cameras operate on uh, and you see that you had about like five more minutes before they would have switched back on so you managed to like get in there and uh, completely switch the timer off and you set the whole system to sleep mode and it won't turn on it won't turn on again until tomorrow morning tight cool um, and as you're as you're investigating uh, and you're you're kind of like again you're trying to reach out like with your powers as well to see if there's anything else going on here uh, extending your your mind and whatnot. Um, you don't feel anything in here, um, but you can feel like this area is kind of like sort of underneath the area where the secret area would be on the floor above you. 
And as you're sort of reaching your senses out further, you can sense like the bottom of that room is uh, you can feel like an like an emptiness, which is like you can tell that's that whole hallway and room area are probably power shielded. Okay, definitely a good thing to know before we head in there. Um, cool. So yeah, so she like takes note of that, um, shuts off all the cameras, puts them on sleep mode until the morning, um, and turns to Vivi with like a thumbs up and is just like, got it. I got it under control. We should probably go find the others. Uh, Vivi is staring directly at the ground and she's repeating under her breath, D, don't panic. A, assess the situation. N, negate powers. C, call for help. E, effectively apologize. And like, looks at the guard, looks back at the spot on the guard. D, don't panic. A, that's that's what she's been doing. Oh, uh, and as you're as you're doing this, I'm gonna say um, as just as Lucia is getting the the cameras turned off you can see the the guard on the floor finally beginning to like stir more like you you could tell that he was starting to wake up before but he was like really out of it and he's starting to regain more of his like actual consciousness at this point like oh god my head what happened and his voice sounds kind of raspy um i think trixie goes over to her kind of like kneels down um like looks her right in the eye and she's like yeah Okay, you're okay. Everything's gonna be okay, and you don't need to panic. Um, we'll apologize later, I think. And she, like, glances at the guy who's, like, kind of starting to stir. Um, but she, like, takes Vivi's hands, squeezes them, and kind of just tries to give her, like, the most reassuring smile that she can. I, yeah. Actually, as you, you... You're saying this, you see the man start to stir more and he's blearily looking up at Vivi. Like his his vision is probably very blurry, you would gather, but he's basically just looking up at like this blurry figure above him that looks like um it has like uh like an all dark outfit and like this near like white porcelain skin looming over him and he he just asks, "Are are you the the angel of death?" <sighs> Vivi bursts into tears. Oh, no. oh, no. oh, no. oh, no. oh no. Trixie just like grabs her and like pushes her face into her shoulder and <laughs> kind of like kicks the dude's side. Like, shut up! <laughs> and he goes like, ah. <laughs> okay, we're leaving. <laughs> and he holds his, his head like, and it, it, he's kind of reeling a bit from that. And it'll take him a sec to get up. <laughs> yeah, I, th- I think I think I think we need to comfort or support. Yeah. For for I think what's happening is uh, ah! is that Trixie is trying to comfort Vivi. Yeah, Tr- Trixie has to do this. Do I? Yes. Oh no! <laughs> you, that's what you were trying to do by talking Vivi down. <laughs> oh no! Oh, this is what oh. you all get when you lower mundane at the expense of everything else. <laughs> Oh no. Um I mean, I also have the angry condition anyway. So yeah. it just would have been yeah. so oh. bad. Okay, so oh. y- this is not helping Vivi at all. Unfortunately, um this is just I I think Vivi you're probably just like even more distraught. Mhm. Oh. oh. No, that wouldn't have helped me. I technically have influence over Vivi, but that d- would not have helped me at all. Yeah, no. Oh yeah, true. Um okay. Well, if if we want to game this, you can give up your influence to gain an additional plus one. Right. Yeah, but it wouldn't it wouldn't do enough. I had a four. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but we 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 still have a team, so it's like tough love kind of thing. Being mean to yeah. I don't know. Yeah, maybe like you 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 want to be like snap out of it as a last resort. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I think. I mean, listen, being the kind, caring person that is not lucia's thing that is not her place in the family (laughs) Um, so i think like after awkwardly trying to like comfort vivi she finally just like huffs and like slams a little foot down on the uh like 
on the tile and it's just like, okay, God, you are VV. You are violence, Violet. You are the violence. Pull it together. You did some violence. That's fine. That's part of your whole like character. We have things to do here. Come on. <laughs> Commit to the bit. <laughs> okay. 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 Yeah. Um, I just, okay. I, I don't, I, I, I wasn't trying to do that. I, I didn't. I know. Okay. I know. You're... I'm... Your violence violet. You're not, like, a bad person. You're not evil. You're not Crimson Signal. I get it. I mean... What was that about Crimson Signal? I don't, look, I... Uh, I'm not even supposed to have powers. I just... I got them as part of my contract, and I keep... I... I... I okay. Okay. Oh. Oh, so, yeah, uh, Valerie, you have to mark a doom track for that, because mm-hmm. you're talking about it openly. Yes. Uh, yeah. But you do also get to, uh, because you're opening up, you do either yep. get to mark potential clear condition or shift labels. I'm going to clear a condition. Okay. Smart move. Okay, I'm going to clear guilty from the previous session. Um, just because I think she's realizing, okay, this, this guy is, this guy is coming too. He's, he's fine. He's going to be okay. He's, he's mm-hmm. a little out of it, but he's, he, he's clearly, you know, conscious and i think trixie kind of like takes what you just said in and just shrugs and is like look i mean i get it i i don't know i get imposter syndrome sometimes like sometimes i look at myself and i'm like oh man like do i really get this do i really deserve this so i kind of get where you're coming from maybe a little bit but i think at the end of the day it's not about how you got your abilities but what you're gonna do with them you know and you're doing good. You're doing great. Yeah, you've knocked a guy out, but, like, he's fine. I'm not fine. You're fine. <laughs> My head is splitting. <laughs> okay. Um, you're okay. going to use Thank- your powers. We're going to take this, you know, company down or whatever, or go down trying. Okay. Thank Thank you. Thank you, Trixie. Yeah. I think, I, um, I, I think I'm good to go. Uh, we should, we should probably go. No. Yeah, probably a good idea. Um, GM. Yes. Do we know that alarms are going off since we're in the security room? Uh, it, now is about the time that they start going off. <laughs> oh. That was, that was just enough time for that to start happening. Cool. Um, so the, the, the entire floor is like just, again, like just in movies, like the entire floor is starting to flash red and there's klaxons going off. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, yeah, Vivi uses her giant and you like can... ribbon scarf to wipe her eyes and yeah and you can see on the, the the screens of the computers in the security area that the alarm was triggered on third floor great you wouldn't be willing to like knock that guy out again so i could maybe try to fix that if i can fix that or do you think we should maybe just go shake my head <laughs> okay yeah that's that's a little bit too much violence okay let's go Violence. <laughs> um, and, and he like he passes out again he's just like had enough so he like just passes out but he is breathing this time cool mm, do i try to disable the alarms is that a smart move <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. i mean ye- yeah, yeah your guard did just faint so you can yeah, if okay, you want yeah. to She's gonna run back to the computer and she's like, "Okay, I'm just just give me like five minutes. If five or minutes, or actually, wait, no, you can't because uh, as soon as you try to do that, uh, the computer starts to fritz and then goes blank because uh, <laughs> Cass oh, destroyed yeah. the entire computer network. Oh, oh. Uh, like hey. I think Yay. I think Tracy's fingers were like about to dive into the keyboard and then it just goes and she just like <laughs> pulls back or. Never mind. Or completely forget it. Okay, we're leaving. And she like grabs Vivi's hands and run or hand and like runs out the door. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, thankfully all the guards are being drawn towards the third floor, so there aren't any near you right now. Uh but that is a problem for the people who are running away from the guards that are nearby. Yeah. So what's oh, going on boy. on the second floor? Your brilliant home alone plan didn't work, unfortunately. What's what's Damn plan it. B? Um, to find a window and see if we can jump out of it. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh god, I have an idea, but like, I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd like to hear what the, 
what the idea okay. is. Okay, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna say everything. I'm just gonna spot my idea out. Okay, so I wanna be I want them to chase me and give the others a chance to escape, and then I wanna use a flare, and I can just use a flare to use the move the ability called move. And if I spend two burn, I can just appear in a place that I've been to before, which is outside. Okay. So that's what the plan is. I just want to draw the attention of the guards away that's from the plan. others so they can run. And then I just disappear. Okay. <laughs> that's my plan. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think I would, I, I'll say all of this to the rest to... But you, you're not telling us your plan, right? Yeah, I'll be saying this out loud to him. So how are you drawing them away? Um... Uh, okay, can I can I roll for burn first? Because <laughs> it depends on what I yes, that would do, um, do, do that okay. first. <laughs> Ooh, I don't have any. Okay, I need, I have, I need to ask a question. Those failures I did, did I get a condition for any of them? Um, I think no, because the con the the consequence of those actions was just that things went horribly wrong. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Let's see if this even you, works. You, you're still kind of like high on your movie logic. Like something's got to work. <sighs> Okay, so that oh, feels like no. it oh, is no. fine. I still got two holes, so that's enough for me to uh -huh. actually do this. Now is about when like your your worries are starting to kick in as you're charging yeah. up your powers. So I I, I clicked um, insecure, guilty, and afraid. Okay. Um, because yeah, <laughs> he, that's he's feeling all of this stuff right now, and just go okay. Dang, that's a familiar <laughs> set of conditions. He's like, okay, I'm I'm gonna try. I hope um to um. I don't know. If I run, maybe they'll follow me, and you get the chance to escape. I can. I'll meet you downstairs. I promise. But I can hopefully try and distract them, and that's what I'm going to be saying to them as we're running. <laughs> okay. Uh. Okay. Be safe. I don't like this, but she just keeps running. <laughs> All right. So um, the the rest of you are finding <laughs> uh, a window to jump out of, and Jaden is going to split off and make sure that he's seen so that he can be followed. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, I'm going to I'm going to say that your distraction works fine cuz that's easy enough. Um but in order to get them to follow you, uh what exactly are you doing to get them to follow you? Are you just like making sure that you're seen and getting them to run after you or are you doing like a power or like anything else? Um as everyone else leaves, um I want to stop and just turn and face the guards who are following us. <laughs> Um, All right, so they're just getting through the yeah. door, so that's they don't see the others, but they do see you standing uh, to face them down. This this boy in like a, a hoodie, so and a, and a half face mask, so they can't see <laughs> yeah. who you are. Thankfully, <laughs> thankfully, um, and I'm just gonna like immediately attack. I'll attack the nearest one and then just turn around and run like the opposite direction to the others, if I can. Okay, so it, basically, I just. This this entire set of questions was basically a, a way for me to figure out like how can I not make you roll something that is based on superior, <laughs> <laughs> and I think that sounds okay. good. <laughs> yeah, I would just like attack them with like a, a flame, like nothing, even, nothing really. Yeah, a flame. I just like um, blast a flame at them. All right, it's so you're freak. gonna uh, you're gonna directly engage a threat with yes. that. Yes, um, it's not terrible, but with my luck on roll twenty so far, it might be. <laughs> oh my god. Please roll oh, twenty. No. Are you kidding me? Oh my oh, god! Oh my god! Okay. That was a now, to, to, that was a one um, to be plus Jack, two, everybody. Jack, yeah. I hate to say it, but this is this is karma, isn't it? <laughs> I think this is karma. <laughs> For what? Uh, yeah, Fun I cast. I cast. What did you do? And Carl's been um, Liz's been rolling it awfully since then. But For you're the rolling great now. For the past, don't don't say that out loud. For the past, <laughs> like two weeks. Two weeks I've been I, I, rolling like garbage. I literally like I curse and live with nat ones forever and <laughs> just kept rolling terribly the whole game. And now it's coming back around. Now okay. yeah. the previous yeah. roll the previous roll was a two and a one. This roll is a one and a two. Uh, I mean at least I'm consistent, you know? Yeah, it's like <laughs> And hey, I'm nearly I've nearly leveled up. One more failure. Alright, well the, the the good thing here is that like uh, it's easy enough to figure out why this doesn't work. Uh, so you shoot out this blast of flame, and surprise, surprise, these guards have anti-power bracelets, so they bring up their shields pretty quickly, and they're able to bounce that off with no trouble. Um, and they oh. just take the opportunity that you took standing there to to advance closer. And, um, uh, oh, yeah. 
I think that's going to be the, the consequence because I don't want to make you mark another condition. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're they're um, closer. They're right upon you. Is there any way I can run us in the opposite direction to the others? Or oh, you can definitely just... still run. It's just you'll have oh, a harder I'm, time I'm... staying ahead of them. Okay, that's fine. That's honestly fine. I'm just going to run. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so your your attack just had no effect. Is yeah, all. he just turns and runs. and uh, Not in the direction the others went in, though. He's trying to um, keep them away. So, yeah, he's just going to turn yeah. and run. So this air, this floor has uh, it mostly like offices and a break room, but it also has like the factory floor. So uh, with, I, I'm gonna say the others are looking for windows, so they're more likely to run towards the office area. Um, Jaden, since you're running in a different direction, you're running more into like the factory area. Okay. Yeah, I'm just okay. gonna keep running. If I find places to like, I don't even want to really hide. I just want to keep running. Like I might zigzag through some of the equipment and stuff, but I'm just gonna keep running running circles if i can and just okay. keep it up until i like i feel a buzz of my phone in my pocket or something to let me know that they're out all right yeah so they're tailing you for now um how is the other group doing right now uh, the the running for the window group queen bee is freaking out just mm. yeah like ever since the virus went haywire Cass has been doing that thing where you are just absolutely sobbing, but also you don't want to bother anyone with the fact that you're upset, so you're just doing it very quietly and kind of has her hood pulled up so no one can see because she doesn't want to be a burden on anyone more than she already has been, so. Uh, oh my god! So, um, Angie's probably not reacting to that specific stuff. Um, she's probably going mm -hmm. to say something, uh... Queen, I need you to carry Cass and fly. I... Can you do that? No. I'm not Queen B. Angie. I'm... I made her up. Okay. Um, so... You stand here, and, uh... Angie's mad now. <laughs> Her okay. friends are freaking out, and Angie's mad. So, <laughs> so I take that to mean you're marking angry. <laughs> yeah, she's gonna punch the window, and I hope she can just do that. Oh so yeah, that it shatters the window, and uh, she's going to hopefully. I'm gonna. Uh, I am gonna keep the angry. And uh, I'm going to unleash my powers, and I'm going to do it to lift Cass and Queen up, so that I and jump out on the ground to safety and Perfect. run. Yeah, <laughs> and use my super strength. That that's a superhero move. Yeah. All right, so you can definitely roll freak for that. Okay, and then I'm gonna take my plus one. Hmm. Oh. <sighs> I'm never gonna level. <laughs> <laughs> so that was a 12, everybody. Yeah. So Angie yeah. manages to scoop up uh, her, oh, her companions. Oh no, that's too bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh. And uh, jumps out the second story window, and because she has um, both just enhanced super idle durability and extra durability for her own powers, uh, the landing doesn't harm her, and she's able to hold the other two off the ground so they don't hit the ground. Yeah, and then um, after that I'm just gonna... I'm gonna assume that we came up with a designated meeting spot. Yes, yes. Where we would, all, where we would all meet like further away to kind of regroup and stuff, so I'm just going to head there. Alright. Maybe it's like five blocks away, and I'm just gonna still be holding them. Like, <laughs> Yeah, I, I like this mental, <laughs> this image of like, uh... Angie just running away with a person under each arm, like two large packages. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's how I'm picturing it, too. And just like, Ooh. just like, fine, I have to solve everything myself. That's where her anger is coming from. I like this, so, too. Because yeah. yeah. I think there's also some frustration with, like, her teammates right now. Yeah. Yeah, and she has a short fuse. It's part of the ball, so... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that's what she's gonna yeah, so that's what she's doing. She's just carrying them. Alright. <laughs> cool, cool. Alright, so you've managed to escape from the building and you're running for the safe area. Um uh how about um let's go to we haven't gone back to Vivi and Trixie in a bit, so how how are you doing in the basement? 
<sighs> you know, um, I think we're running. <laughs> yeah. They were running. We were running. Yep, yep. And <laughs> thankfully unimpeded, because the guards aren't near you anymore. Mm-hmm. Thank goodness. Um, yeah, I... Yeah, we're, I, I guess we're, we're heading Running up. out of the building. Yes. Or yeah. at least up. Mm-hmm. Up and out. Yeah, I think if you're going, like, to find an exit, you would have to go through, like, the front... Like, the first floor. Uh, but I think you can... How are, how are you approaching it? Are you using your invisibility again, or are you just booking it? Definitely. Um, I mean, they can probably hear our footsteps, but maybe yeah. if the sirens are blaring, or the alarm's blaring. Yeah, they can't hear you maybe quite not. as much with the alarms blaring. Uh, as you get into the first floor and you take a quick look around, you can see that there are still a couple guards here, but they're the two guards that are stationed outside the secret room, so they're not, like, running to places right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, cool. Um, then I think, like, uh, holding Vivi's hand, Trixie kind of, like, drags her along and is, like, running, kind of trying to dodge and make <laughs> get them out as safe as, as safe and quickly as she can. Yeah, you duck and weave behind, like, a bunch of palm trees to, <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. to stay unseen. Exactly. Uh, okay, and I think since, again, like, the, the situation, like I've described it, is, like, you don't have enough impediment to worry about it, so I'm just, I'm not going to make you roll anything. You managed to make it to the exit that you're going for, uh, and you managed to make it out of the building. Um, and I think once they're out, she, like, pulls her mask down so she can just, like, take big gulps of breath and try to calm down, because, like, this went... This went up. This went, <laughs> this went sideways, for sure. <sighs> Uh, so everybody has made it out at this point, except for Elementum. Um, so mm-hmm. how how are things going? Uh, the you're still like managing to to duck and weave around various like factory equipment, um, and, but the guards are pretty close by you. Uh, how are you dealing with this? Um, well, while, while I'm running, I'm gonna try and like send a text through Disc Idol, <laughs> um, just for like <laughs> I'm probably too busy running to type anything out like significant. So you just post like a question mark and an exclamation mark and sends that. It's like, <laughs> waits for I a response. I guess that'll at least alert people that you're still <laughs> yeah. able to talk. Like, you haven't um, been caught yet. Can I get Angie to respond? Yeah, sure. Oh, okay. Um, she's just gonna say uh, safe at meeting okay. place. Um, would we have just talked about a meeting place or would we have been there before? Oh yeah, you would have discussed the meeting place beforehand. Um, so discussed. Just it's discussed. probably okay. going to be like at least like a block away. Okay. So I mean, like once he sees this, he just like breathes a sigh of relief. i um, relief, and I'm going to use. I'm going to spend the two uh, the only two burn I even got, and use move, um, which lets me just teleport to the to a place any place you've previously been to. So I'm going to like teleport, um, maybe like a. I don't think I'm, I'm assuming we haven't like we didn't actually go there to the meeting spot. We just discussed it, so I'll um, like teleport en route as close to yeah that to the area closest place you went. Yeah, like you maybe yeah. like pointed it out when you got off the bus, but you didn't actually walk all the way over there. Yeah, so I kind of like what kind of it looks like is as he's running um, from um, his feet upwards, it almost like it's it's like if you had a piece of paper and you lit it on fire from the bottom and it eats its way up. Um, it kind of eats its way up, um, Jaden, and as it, as the flames leave something, it leaves nothing behind until it just disappears um, mid run. And then oh, at the um, at the point that's as close to the meeting spot as possible, um, you kind of just see like a mist of like essentially water vapor um, first take shape of a human and then um, solidify and then become opaque. And Jaden just appears there, still in mid run, and just head straight for um straight for the uh, meeting spot. That is so just cool. Breathing heavily. <laughs> Alright, so I think everybody has successfully exited the building at this point in uh various uh emotional mm-hmm. states. Um, but you managed to all make it back to the rendezvous point. <sighs> so when Vivi and Trixie get there, um and she's just gonna start crying and like just pull everyone into a group hug and it's more just like relief because like everybody's safe now so she's just like oh my god and then she just hugs everyone uh, Vivi is absolutely crying again oh. 
Trixie is doing that thing where you like lean mm. away, but she's not <laughs> leaning away enough to actually get yeah. out of the hug. I mean, <laughs> I don't know if Jade, does Jaden arrive, comes in to see this group hug, and he's like, what, what's yeah. happening? Queen Bee tried, tries to push away from the hug because she doesn't feel like she deserves it. Okay, so Angie kind of lets go of everyone, and then she like wipes her eyes. Is, is everyone okay? <sighs> We're safe, and that's what matters. Okay, everyone? We yes, are alive. We're- and we are here together. Everyone's alive. Nobody died. That's the important thing. Yeah. We're all okay. Yeah, but the mission was like a total bust. We didn't get anything. I mean, uh, they still a van. Um, Cass. Hmm. Yeah, Cass is um clearly still sobbing and like sniffling trying to calm herself down probably doing like some hand flaps Mm. and then just like grabs her um synth board and starts pecking at the buttons and uh polly speaks up and says i'm sorry words hard now it's my fault my fault all my fault i messed up i'm sorry i need time I mean, today was kind of rough. We probably should uh, head back to Karen's. Yeah. Yeah, I think we should go to Karen's. And I think we need to make a run at the no-name brand equivalent of 7-Eleven and pick up a whole lot of snacks and as much pop as we can carry. I think we're all (laughs) in agreement of that, right? Yeah. Yeah. And we're just going to watch a stupid movie, and then in the morning, we will figure everything out, okay? But, like, even as she's telling this, like, she's got her hands out that she's trying to reassure everyone, but they're shaking a little bit. Yeah. Um, Trixie takes one (laughs) of um, Angie's hands, one, or Bane Raven's hands, one of Vivi's hands, looks over at Cass, realizes that tragically she does not have enough hands Um, (laughs) uh, but like nods and she's like okay we should we should probably go now yeah we should go now and just like marches off just expecting everybody else to come with Mm -hmm. yeah I just follow yeah yeah I I think as you walk um uh I think Cass's communicator gets a a buzz and it's uh there's a message from karen checking in like uh status report are you all okay Mm. yeah i Cass probably sends back like we got out we got nothing karen sends a just a a simple frowny face emoticon (laughs) like just the colon and the bracket Mm. but yeah i think you all uh you make your way to the nearest um to the nearest 7-Eleven, you get uh, you get your snacks um, I think you get some weird looks because I, I don't know if any of you are in the state to like change out of your like espionage gear um, I mean, I, yeah. <laughs> but I don't think the 2am 7-Eleven person is going to care that much yeah, yeah. Uh, average day average and you day. manage to catch like one of the, like you get like a one of those van cabs to take you back to Karen's mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not sure, but maybe at some point you turn around and Queen Bee is not there. Ooh. Just, Aww. I'm not sure, but seems Aww. like the sort of thing. Well, you can definitely um, clear Afraid, because you ran from something difficult. Yeah. Uh, I, I guess, does anybody have Hopeless marked? Because this is like getting snacks and watching a stupid movie is flinging yourself into easy relief. Uh, uh, no, I'm not I. Okay. Tragically not. Just nope. checking. I think, like, the anger would have fizzled for sure, but, um... Well, you br- you did break a window, so... I did, yeah. I'll say, I'll say that clears it. I did kick that dude. <laughs> Does that... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you did ca- cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um... Honestly, I, I think the, the real... For me, out of character, I think the real tragedy here is I'm going to assume that um, magically applied makeup doesn't, doesn't run when you cry. Oh my god, and we all have perfect makeup and we're just sobbing. 
<laughs> like the idols we are. <sighs> all right, and you you all manage to make it back to Karen's, and you uh, you regroup there, and I think you just spend the rest of the evening, um, just trying to recover and thinking about if this is even the sort of thing that you're up for in the future. Mm -hmm. Angie's is going to pick like the most teen love drama that you don't have to think about while watching (laughs) and just puts it on. She's like, I just want to know what happens with Chase. She crosses her arms. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, yeah, no, like, <laughs> he's kind of the worst, but, like, I'm invested. There's good in him, I know it. <laughs> I, I don't I don't know, I don't really see what you see in him. Um, look at him. Yeah, he has abs. I, yeah. I mean, I'm looking, I still don't, don't really get it. Okay, so we do have, just, just honestly start the whole season over again, we have to start from yeah, the Yeah, you're right, okay. you're right. Okay. You will understand. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and as as you're doing this, I'm gonna quickly. Uh, I, I'm assuming people are detransforming. I'm gonna quickly do your detransform yes, yeah. shifts mm-hmm. um, because sure. I, I have a I have a thing that I want to do for you all. Oh, okay. Um, so, but scared, I need to though. shift your labels to do that. Uh, just a sec. For most of you, I'm gonna raise your mundane and lower your superior. Uh, yeah. Uh, for Valerie, I can't do that because your mundane is maxed, so I raised your danger and lowered your superior, which I think is in line with your choices from earlier. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, for Queen Bee, I also can't... Well, I, I guess I can raise your mundane, uh, but I, I almost feel like uh, it would be more appropriate on Queen Bee to raise your freak because you're feeling like... Kind of yeah. like you're feeling like a freak right now. Yeah. Don't belong here. Uh, but I, I had a, a, a ulterior motive for raising all your mundane because uh, I feel like this whole like movie watching thing is a like a big old group comfort and support. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. So let's see. Uh, this was Angie's idea, so I'm gonna have Angie roll the comfort and support. Oh right, sorry. <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> Does it help that you no. have influence over me? Oh yeah, that's true. You have influence over just about everybody. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate influence over me. Yeah, um, <laughs> Valerie, Jaden, and uh, Lucia, and Lucia. Oh yeah, forgot okay, to write so that down. Is that everybody? No, um, it's not Cass. Not I Cass. Do you have influence over <laughs> yeah. Cass. Oh, do I? <laughs> yeah, Cass gave influence to everyone because you all were very nice last session. Oh, you did? Oh, that's okay. right, you did. Okay, Last so you session did. Yeah, was the that polar is... opposite of this. <laughs> um, <laughs> so you do have, you got a six on your roll, uh, but you do have influence over the entire group, so the, the plus one brings it up to a seven. Yay. Um, so I think um, Angie's idea has managed to, like, mass comfort the group. Um, everybody can take their choice of uh, either marking a potential, clearing a condition, or shifting labels. Hmm. Clearing a condition. I'm, clear condition. I'm gonna Fine marking potential. I'm, oh, I can. Wait, you can mark potential. As yep, an option. Yep. You can choose to oh, mark potential. Hey guys, I so I leveled up last week. I leveled up again. No, you. Oh my god. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm one away. Do I still mark potential if I failed the roll? Unfortunately, no. Uh, because the your your influence bumped it up to a mixed success, so that's not a okay. failure. Okay. Uh, so Angie is the only one who doesn't get to take mm. benefit from the comfort or support move, unfortunately, which I think makes sense mm. because you might still be a little bit annoyed with everybody. And I have no conditions or anything, so I'm actually in pretty good shape. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> oh yeah, because your anger was cleared immediately after you punched the window. Yeah. Well, and also Queen mm-hmm. Bee can't take advantage of this because she is not yeah, here. Yeah, because not there. Uh, where did Queen Bee uh, end up, by the way? I'm curious. Uh... Right now, I think Allen is just just wandering through the Seven Eleven in a daze, because the only place with the light and just mm. To, mm. not even sure how to get home. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh no! Uh, as you're wandering through here, uh, someone in the Seven Eleven notices that you seem out of it, um, and the it's a it's a guy. It's in like an older like late 40s guy with kind of like semi-balding hair uh, and like 
mustache and beard, salt and pepper kind of look, uh, wearing a jean jacket and plaid. He looks kind of like, just kind of like a down home kind of guy. Um, and he, he wanders, like, wanders over to you like, hey, hey, hey buddy, you okay there, kid? What's going on? I'm okay, please leave me alone. Are you, are you, you sure? You look like you're, you're gonna fall over if I leave you alone. I've had an argument with some friends. It's okay. Hmm. Teenagers, yeah, I guess. Are, are you sure, though? You don't need a hospital or anything? Do you want me to call someone for you? Do you need a ride somewhere? I'll walk, thank you. Okay, well. Uh, well. I, if you're sure, uh, I... Alright, and he, he leaves you be. Of all, the, all the time, of all the time for someone to notice me. Yeah, he's still kind of like keeping an eye on you um, as he's like looking elsewhere in the store, but <laughs> respecting your wishes at least. Um, can I say that Angie was probably periodically texting just to let them know where we are, that we're okay, and that if they feel up to it, they can come hang out if they want. Yeah, so you get those texts on your and phone, Alan. That kind of stuff. Yeah, just the occasional update. And then later on, just some rants about the drama for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> so you can tell Alan that Karen says hi. <laughs> yes, I do. Oh, that means a lot. And I just answered thank you. But I'm not gonna show up. All right, and I think with that, that finally, eventually, I think Alan mm. does manage to like catch a, like a cab home or something like that, or or a late night bus home, or even like when you might call your your parents to grab you. I could all walk all the way to uh, to Karen's place and get the bike. I don't know. Oh, you walk all that? Oh God, you're like that's halfway across town. Lots of cardio. Oh my God. Lots of time to think. You, that's gonna be, you're gonna get there when, like, the sun comes up. Also, asking parents to pick you up from the Neon District when you said you were sleeping <laughs> over at a friend's. Yeah, not no. that good idea. <laughs> yeah, so I think uh, after all of you managed, like, the rest of you who stayed at Karen's, like, fall asleep watching the movie eventually. Um, and in the morning, Alan finally manages to make their way to the front of Karen's house. The front door opens, um, and Karen steps out. Um, the, the rest of you are asleep for right now. I'm gonna say that it's early enough for that. Um, and she just rushes over and gives you a big hug. Okay, now I'm crying. It's, o it's okay. It's gonna be okay. And y she's not even pretending anymore. You kind of, like, suspected that she might have, like, yeah. suspected your identity, but she's not even hiding it anymore. She knows. You're gonna you're gonna be okay. I froze again. I, I know. It was a scary situation. You did as well as as well as you could have. I think nobody really sounded like they knew what was going she to happen. She didn't freeze. Angie never froze. Angie's a different person, like doesn't make you a bad person because you didn't know what to do. Thank you, Kai. I think everybody was scared. Everybody reacted differently to being scared. I think as the, the important thing is you're safe and that just that you're safe, honestly. <sighs> do you want to come downstairs or? I'm, I don't think I'm ready for that, but thank you. Mm. Well, you can call your parents to come pick you up from here, at least, then. I don't, don't. I'll wait with you. I don't want to bother them. I, I, have, I have my bicycle. I... I think... You, you know what? You know what? No. Um, and she actually, like, takes you by the hand, and she takes you out behind the house. And, like, further away from, like, the windows where things could possibly be seen and takes you to, like, kind of, like, behind the fence of the house. She takes a breath. And from behind her, you're not sure what you see. Like, it's hard to keep your focus on, but you feel like there's something there that 
is neither you nor Karen. And suddenly, the world shifts around you, and you find yourself in front of your own house. The fuck? I'm not going to make you walk home. You shouldn't have to. And Karen disappears. And that's the end of the episode, I feel like. Yeah. Well, dang. Mm. What? Yo, oh, what? Karen! What? Karen! 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 So we were right that Karen was all powerful. Karen is omnipotent. <laughs> is that what's happening right now? I mean, I was going to have just bend space time. Oh. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, I also just want to like check in with everyone that was that was yes. really intense oh my How god are we doing? yeah is I'm everybody good. okay yeah yeah no, the only I'm thing good, that's yeah. brought to me to my core is this karen lore i'm good karen um, is but a thank god. you for checking in <laughs> i think that's yeah, what we're learning <laughs> karen's Wait. a god tried a little but not in a bad way so <laughs> Thank you so much for listening to Super Idols RPG, and thanks to the wonderful cast of today's episode. Valerie slash Violence Violet was played by Dane Alexa, who can be found on Twitter at AuthorX. Angie slash Bane Raven was played by T. Jaden slash Elementum was played by Drac, who can be found on Twitter at Draconix. Alan slash Queen Bee was played by Luca, who can be found on Twitter at Queen BE1516087. Lucia Moore slash Trixie was played by Liv Chavez, who can be found on Twitter at Live in a Day. And special guest character Cassandra Tora was played by Alice Lily Kira, who can be found on Twitter at Magical Girl Kira. GMing, editing, and mastering for this episode was done by me, Aaron Cerise. You can find me on Twitter and YouTube at Aaron Cerise, and you can find more information and art for Super Idols on our website at superidolsrpg.wordpress.com. This campaign is played using Masks, a new generation, written by Brendan Conway and published by Magpie Games, with custom moves by Aaron Cerise and Zach P. Our opening theme is Le Chevalier Noir Instrumental by Cyborg Jeff and is used under license from Gemendo Music. Our ending theme is Lax Instrumental by Humans Win, formerly known as Lance Conrad, and is under license from Storyblocks.com. All other incidental music and sound effects for this episode are licensed from storyblocks.com and freesound.org. Thank you all for listening, stay well, and goodbye until next time! Be gay! Roll dice! An LGBTQIA actual play podcast network.